chunky game and uh, quite a striking image there on the front it's a German soldier capturing some prisoners of war and in the background you can see it's a big prison camp called its castle now I used to play this game as a kid with my dad and my uncles and um, yeah it's a very much a cult game I don't know how popular it actually is but it's a it's very much a cult game and if I turn it over let's have a look at what it says about it called its castle World War Two impregnable fortress in an escapable prison until now designed by Major Pat Reed one of only a handful of prisoners of war to escape called its castle and screenwriter Brian Degas escape from called its is the iconic game of careful planning and nerves of steel become allied escape officers assemble your equipment plot your escape routes and coordinate your team efforts to avoid the guards Become a German security officer, maintain control through guile, ruthlessness, and careful observation despite limited numbers. This deluxe edition of the classic game for two to six players includes both original and updated rules, new hand painted artwork, and an oversized board, 56 wooden plain pieces, a hundred illustrated cards, a 32-page history book, and unique replicas and artifacts from the prison. It's a really heavy board game, this is. So, 75 years ago, Major Reed braved barbed wire, searchlights, and armed guards to escape from Colditz, and now it is your turn to do the same. So this is really good fun. The idea is that you play one of the Allied prisoners of war, Americans, British, Polish, etc., and you have to try and escape the perimeters of Goldit's Castle. So you can climb walls, you can dig tunnels, you can bribe sentries, but your opponent, the Germans, um, so somebody has to play the Germans. And your idea is to thwart any es escape attempts. Now this is a really good game. It lasts for a good few hours. Um, and I've had this for a few years now. And I haven't actually played it yet. I think I must have had it for about six or seven years. And I still haven't opened it and played it. The idea is that I, I always will get around to doing it. Um, but this is a really good game and very nostalgic for me um, as a kid. So I had the original version. I think my dad must have played it back in the 60s and 70s and uh, he bought it and we used to play it as a around the table. Um, we used to have many board game nights. And this was a firm favourite of mine. Escape from Gold, it's a really good game. I don't know if you get this anywhere else, but it used to be um, Parker Games, but it's now Osprey Games. Um, the box has definitely changed. There used to be a Schwarzdecker, um, which has been removed now because of obvious reasons. I really recommend this game if you like it. A long game. And, uh, yeah. And a few good players. And it's really enjoyable. So the idea is you get the map of the Colditz Castle. And you get a roll call if I remember. Um, now, if you roll a double dice, you get caught by a German guard. You roll double. Um, you can get out of escape from um, the prison. Um, but it's a good game. It's a brilliant game. Uh, this is just a 
jigsaw, 500 piece jigsaw. Um, I haven't really got the patience for jigsaws at the moment. Um, I like the idea of doing a jigsaw, but I find it really hard to um, find the time to sit and do it. I can understand it's very relaxing. But at the moment, I haven't done a jigsaw in many, many, many years. Yes, yeah, so there's quite a few games that have nostalgic appeal for me. So this is Cluedo, the classic mystery game. A bit rattly as well. Now, this is certainly not the original version I had. This looks far too funky than what the original used to. I had just a classic original game at one point and I loved it. Um, this has been updated. I don't know how I actually acquired Cluedo. It used to be made by Waddington's, but now it's Hasbro, and they've completely reshoot this up. It used to be, had a very 1930s Agatha Christie style, but it looks like um, it's been very modernised. i flick this round. So you've got to guess, was it Professor Plum with the wrench in the bedroom? So there is one murder, six suspects, the classic mystery game. Reclusive millionaire Samuel Black has been murdered in his mansion. Now it's up to you to crack the case. So the object of the game is at the very beginning. inside of an envelope in the middle of the board and these tend to be um, one person, one weapon and one um, area and the idea is you visit each room inside of the mansion and I think if you get one person in a room you get to check um, the cards that are remaining so the idea is through a process of elimination you get to deduce who actually did it so it's really just a card game, really, a glorified card game. Um, but I'm not so keen on this new, funky version of Cluedo. I much preferred the original version. And the box is very rattly, there's a lot of loose bits inside. Right, what else is in there? this a memory game with lights and sounds I think this has been some kind of Christmas stocking item I've had watch remember and repeat do you remember a, a game many years ago called Simple Simon where you would have to remember what light was on and what sequence and press to, to kind of copy what it had done so I think this has been some kind of stock and filler. That's how you call it where you are. Where you get like little gifts um, tacked together to make one present. But this used to be called Simple Simon. Or just Simon back in the day. Now I'm not old to remember it to be honest. I am. Tamagotchi. I didn't realise I had this. Um, pixel pets, 168 pets to choose from, pocket sized. So these were big in the 1990s, you know, you could get this little animal and feed it, look after it, that kind of thing. Um, so what does it say here? You can choose from a cat, a bat, a camel, a hedgehog. A crab, a butterfly, a dolphin, a duck, an elephant, fish, frog, sheep, horse, all of these different animals. So you can do things like let them go to the toilet, feed them, 
you get to teach them. And the idea is you've got to look after them and keep a routine going. A virtual pet, so these were a big craze back in the 90s. And again, I don't remember how I actually it received this. I don't remember this at all. It's probably been languishing in there for quite a while. This is um, this is a childhood game that I still have called Matching Pairs. So it's been around for many, many, many years. Uh, this is a game where you um, have this board and you have these counters. You lift up the counter and there's an image underneath. And the idea is you've got to try and get a pair. It's kind of like Snap, really. Um, and it's great fun. You just gotta have a good memory to to remember which images are underneath the the things that you lift up. Um, a first memory game. So this is way back in the seventies and eighties. This was, and it's by MB Games, Milton Bradley Games, and I don't think they exist anymore. Um, yeah, this used to be great fun actually. So the whole idea is to pick a pair. What else is in here? Yeah, I got this game a good few years ago, probably about three, four years ago. A Christmas present. And it is Alien, the fate of the Nostromo. Um, it's a board, great, a board game version of the classic movie. And, um, yeah, there's all the characters from the original movie. So there's Brett, Dallas, Ripley, Lambert, and Parker. Um, the alien stalks the corridors of the commercial starship Nostromo and to you and your crewmates. So you have to work together to move through the ship, gather supplies and craft them, items to survive. Proceed carefully, the alien could be just around the corner. And remember, in space no one can hear you scream. Yeah, so I did this a few years ago uh, with our friends and it was great fun. We read the rules and uh, we played it and it was really good fun. I just remember the alien moving around and you had to stay alive. Um, and it's funny, you know, we really learned how to play it but I can't really remember a great deal of the detail of the um, gameplay now. Seems to be a bit of a craze now where these movies are being um, made into games. Yeah, this game, a ridiculous mouthpiece challenge game. Now this is a silly game where you put these cards in your mouth um, and it kind of lifts up your lips and it's not a very appealing sight to be honest. Um, it was one of those novelty games which everybody wanted to play back in about five, six years ago. So you earn cards by successfully guessing phrases and the team with the most cards at the end of the game wins. So, to be honest, it's not as good as what it appears. 
because after you played it for a few minutes it gets a little bit repetitive and it's not as funny um, I got this for a New Year's Eve and we took it to um, a cottage for New Year's Eve to play with some friends and we did play it for a while but it lost its charm very quickly and I've never played it since so I reckon that was about six or seven years ago I remember everybody in the office was buying this it was one of those games that you had to have it was a bit of a craze but it just didn't have any longevity whatsoever This is Scrabble, the old classic, and it's in this lovely wooden edition. Um, this really doesn't need much introduction. It's a classic and I think game collection is, is complete without Scrabble. Um, there's a elastic band around there. He's 
um, string or something. Um, there is like butterflies in his stomach, his funny bone, his collarbone, his Adam's apple, his heart. And you've got to try and prize them out with the tweezers. Um, it is good fun and I used to love this as a kid. And again, I'm not sure why I've got operation as an adult. This is certainly not a... Um, this is certainly not um, something you'll get as an adult. Probably nostalgic reasons. I think I remember one Christmas Eve, um, I had my neighbours in and the kids and they were all playing these kind of games. So maybe that's why I got it, just to kind of have a little bit of a, um, a night, a family night on Christmas Eve. Operation. I did love it as a kid. Upwards. Now I've not played this. I don't know where this has come from. A 3D game of high-rised word building. So it looks a little bit like Scrabble. How you build words with the little squares. Uh, but I've not played it. It says here, easy to play, simply add letters to the game board. Stack the letters to change words. Um, and the higher the stack, the higher the score. Sounds okay, actually. Yeah, it sounds quite appealing to me. I don't know why I've never played this. I don't know why it's here. Um, maybe we could give that a try at some point. Upwards. And we're nearly at the bottom. There's only one more in here now. And no game collection is complete without Monopoly. This is not the classic game that I liked. This is some kind of funky monopoly. Here and now electronic banking. So this is a modern monopoly for modern people. I have played this many years ago. And instead of the classic monopoly pieces you've now got, you know, an aeroplane, a skateboard, skate and a cell phone and instead of paying money you have a credit card um, and it says now you can now wheel and deal without the hassle of carrying loads of cash on you especially when it's millions of pounds things have moved on and just like in the real world all you need to do is swipe your bank card to transfer your money it couldn't be easier um, now, I did play this, must have had this excess of 10 years, 15 years even, and I played it once, but I prefer the original version, the classic version, and these games are just rattling around inside all these little pieces, you can hear them, but um, yeah, I've never felt the inclination to revisit this. in at a charity shop, something like that. I'm not sure if I'll play this version again. And last but not least, we've got Battleships, which is one of my ultimate favourites. So this is just a travel um, edition. And the idea is that go back to back and you plot where you want to put all your ships and the other person will then give coordinates which you would uh, they would peg off and the idea is they need to find out where you've located your ships and for every time they fill the pegs up with a red they can 
This is a great game. It's an absolutely amazing game. And I remember back when I was a kid, there used to be an electronic version where you would hear, you know, the ship um, being bombed. And that was great. But I think I must have bought this for a journey somewhere. And uh, it's still a good game to pull out, you know, if you're bored or you're traveling. And it's so easy. It's just a lot of pegs inside it too. Little plastic containers. Very easy. So this is one of my favorite board games, to be honest. And I love it. And it's dead simple. And, yeah. We now just have a nice empty case. And now I've got to get all of these games back inside. But I do hope you've enjoyed just this lo-fi ramble about the different board games that I have and uh, yeah I do hope you've enjoyed it and I wish you well and I will see you again